just got a text on my phone and said we were through it either. I look at the devil and told him God bless you. I just want to show you guys this book in particular because this is something that kind of mirrors the video that I did with, I think, the Tony Mike record. But in this song, um, I got a studio rex on his, on his lead. I also want to show you guys that I incorporated a little bit of the saturation on the vocal and the kind of a non, a non uh, sort of um, uh, non traditional thing to do. I have a, a one knob filter actually taking the high end off the, the vocal. Um, and people would say, nah, that sounds you know, crazy. Why would you do that to a vocal if you wanted to be sitting in your face? But again, this is an unconventional thing that just worked in the song, right? And it just gives it kind of a warm sound. A lot of people say to me, yeah, vocal's a little too edgy, but I want them clear. This is a little trick that I do a lot where I'll actually filter the, the vocal top end. I'll, I'll play you a little bit of it and see if you guys can hear it as I do it live. Let me see. Cut it out first. Let me cut out that too. <laughs> Now I feel like enemies. I fuck with you no more. Yeah. You know if it was up to me. Without it, I never let you go. Gotcha. But you know you gotta leave. And then in the mix, I fuck with you no more. You can tweak it. So it's a little touch that sounds a little dreamy and you gotta be careful because when you all go unconventional, the point of it is for it to give you a feeling and not notice it. You, you follow what I'm saying, if that makes sense? I do, yeah, I right. do. So, so it's people looking and go, what, what are you doing? Why are you cutting the, the high end off? But it works, you know, it's a little touch. Uh, uh, and sometimes I'll do stuff like this and I'll print without it. And you know, it, you gotta be careful, you're walking those lines. But I, I wanted to show you guys this because it just shows you things that are not conventional that do work. So don't be afraid to try stuff. So while we're, while we're on the vocal, um, sure. we've got uh, Lucas, Kyle, um, Richard, Johnny, and a bunch of all, all asking you about compression and different parts of the vocal. So I'm, okay. let's, let's go through some, let's some answers to all their questions. So I'm sure. seeing two compressors on here. I'm seeing one of my favorite plugins, the C6, and another one of my favorites, the Arvox. Yes. Um, is there any, I mean, what's your, is there a, a, a reason that you like to order certain compression on this? Uh, uh, yeah. G generally speaking, this is kind of how I go. I, I, I pop it in EQ at the beginning if, if needed to sort of curtail the sub frequencies that you may not hear on little monitors and, you know, maybe like a popper or whatever, you know, sometimes they touch the mic stand or some flutter, get it out of there. Cause the vocal doesn't need to have. 20 30 hertz you know what i mean right. um so i do that just more as a, as a safety precaution but the c6 is where i do a lot of the work which i've covered before and again here i'm not sure how much i'm in fact i'm gonna play a bit real quick let me see subtle right so normally i would be targeting frequencies i want to pull back but this vocal has a great sound to it already. so that's another thing i was going to say is you know don't overanalyze don't overthink things if it doesn't need it don't do it because you saw it in some video do it because it's actually you know these tools are to learn and then apply in the correct time you can actually completely screw up a mix if you just are doing stuff because you feel you need to do it you know um yeah and with that said so you see i'm, I'm all i'm doing is pulling up maybe a little bit of um what is this about four right in the middle it's a little bit 4k just pushing it up a little bit and i'm pulling back um the high end to help the ds are coming up next and uh, a little bit of the 4K as well, just to kind of keep it under control. And then I follow that with a de which I have on everything. I mean, a de is, you have to have it, you know? Lucas, Lucas is actually, his specific question is, uh, hi folks, thanks for the opportunity. You're welcome. I'm having trouble yeah. with sibilance. What would be the best approach to deal with that as in plug-in order and choice of maybe mic position, et cetera, any suggestions? Um, when, well, my position is not so, well, one thing I can tell you, do not record with a de do not do that. I've done it with kneeling people. Listen, you can get lucky and get it right, but if you don't get it right, we cannot do that. So it's a problem. Um, we could, but it's a headache. Uh, but uh, de -esser, just learn how to use a de -esser. Learn how to do a multiband compressor could be a de -esser where you can fish for that frequency. That's a problem. Um, but usually for me, similar I find, of course, if a microphone, for example, you're using a Sony that's super sharp, super clear, 
you know, and that person's voice has a lot of like 7K or 10K or whatever the case may be. Uh, maybe you want to go to a to an Uman, you know, something warmer. But other than that, it's usually inherited in the person's voice. Everybody has their own frequencies that jump out more or they're, they're just naturally more exaggerated. So as a mix engineer, I'm always looking to listen first just to the vocal and be like, okay, I see where the problems are and then attack those. Because what you're trying to do is get sort of an even um, slate to start making it sound good, if that makes right. sense. Yeah, you know? it makes I, I, th yeah. I think that makes yeah. sense. But Diesel's your uh, friend, and I love the, I love this Diesel. That's my um, Before we move on, Sal yeah. has asked, how much did you actually filter off the highs with that one knob? Um, I you know I moved it, <laughs> but what? Look at we're at about eight k, and and really that's a little much. I was really more probably around eight and a half, maybe nine. Um, and really, it's just, it was only because I thought, ah, it, frankly, I don't think I needed it. You take it off, it sounds good, but it just added, it's, it's almost more of a producer thing than it is a mixing thing. It's just felt good. I was like, you know, it feels good. Yeah. 